Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your love, for your goodness, your mercy, for the many ways that you show us you care about us individually as well as collectively. I pray that as we have assembly this morning that you will be here in our midst and that you will um, help our, our questions and our answers to be clear and to represent you. And Lord, I thank you that we're about to have Bible conference and that this year everybody can take part. And I just pray f even now that you'll prepare our hearts, that you will show us how to really study your word so that we get the meaning and the uh, experience with you that you want us to through your word. And we just love you, Lord, and we thank you that you love us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, maybe Thomas, um, maybe you would help pick up questions. Anybody have some already ready? <coughs> that we can start with. This is the first Q&A of the year, and so we don't have a backlog to start on. Um, maybe not, I, because I got some questions earlier from students in class, not in class, in study hall, I thought they did. Um, these are, this is an opportunity to ask questions of um, importance to you, questions you may have about why we do what we do or why we don't do what we don't do or things of that nature that you may not have. We Actually, you can ask any time. You don't have to wait for a Q&A. But uh, you might be shy about asking us individually. No need to be. Never mind. I was just going to say we're not scary, but then that was awkward because it wasn't on. <laughs> Aaliyah, we'll give you a list of things um, as far as both clothing and other items. So I'll post that. And actually, we could run off a few extras for those. How many of you would want to take it to your room? We'll take a list. Yeah, we could post it in the dorm and, and, and then give the staff children. Good question. We want you to go prepared. Uh, one year, one year, I hate to say this, it was embarrassing, but we got out to our camping place and we were at least far away, far enough away, we weren't able to get home very easily to pick up anything. And it was colder, and some of the students hadn't taken heed of bringing clothes, and, bl and um, they needed blankets. It was a quite a bit colder than what it's going to be. And we actually borrowed things from other campers. I don't want to ever have to go through that again. Um, it was a little embarrassing. OK. Yes. You have no, not on Thursday. It starts Thursday night. So you have regular classes on Thursday. But Friday, it's your whole school day and into the afternoon. OK, if you have some questions, we'll get started with them. Thank you. Are hammocks allowed on the camping trip? They are. Now, whether or not you will be allowed to sleep out all night in them, that we haven't discussed, but definitely they are useful and fun to have on the camping trip. And this camping trip, um, because we can spread it out further, you'll have a little more relaxing time. 
How long will our Thanksgiving and Christmas break be? <laughs> Only the Lord knows. Um, Can I say one thing about hammocks? Yes. Um, they are nice to sleep in, but when the weather starts to tip colder, it's a little bit more difficult, unless you have a really good pad under you, um, because otherwise the wind up. or the air comes and takes your body heat, and then you become cold. So that, that's one thing to keep in mind for, in general, with uh, hammocks. Um, when it comes, going back to Christmas and Thanksgiving breaks, next, um, probably, don't understand that probably is a condition, <laughs> probably next assembly we'll be able to tell you. We're still working on that. But, um, and, yeah, and we're going to be having meetings with your parents and, and talking that through. But probably next Wednesday we'll be able to tell you that. The good news is Christmas break, at least, will be a little longer than usual because you're having this, instead of fall break, those days can be added to your Christmas break for students. Can we use our phones during the camping? No. <laughs> Why can't we have more free time throughout the day? I'll let somebody else answer that one. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, um, like in LTJ, Mr. Neal will always tell you that idle hands are the devil's workplace. So, for you to have free time, also, it's like another thing, if you're busy all the time, you actually have more time to do things because you're like, I have all these things to do, I need to find a way to plan them out so I can make time. If you have a bunch of time, I know myself personally, when I have like those two hours to clean my room on Friday evening, I'm not cleaning my room. I'm talking, I'm playing the piano, I'm doing random stuff, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. So having that free time, you think you're gonna get more done, but you're really not gonna get anything done. <laughs> You're probably just going to waste time and talk to your friends, and then you'll come back the next day and say, I didn't have enough time. So, I mean, it's better as it is. At least, you know, you're getting, you know that you have a certain amount of time to do something, and there is no free time in between. It helps you with your time management skills, too. When uh, I agree completely with what she said, um, in addition to that, when the school was first beginning, we studied, as we still do, you know, what is the Lord's counsel on education? And we tried to include in our program everything that was in there. Um, and it ends up being a packed schedule. Um, one of the positive things you'll find from it as you go on from OHA, however, is that you have had great opportunity to learn time management. And that is something that's a huge blessing throughout life. Why is our set schedule so packed on Sabbath? Why can't we rest having, after having such an intense schedule during the week? Well, they do have free times on some Sabbaths. Um, but also, if you're if you're being lazy and like just sleeping all Sabbath, what's Sabbath for? Sabbath is to spend time with God. So if you're if you're sleeping the whole day after the whole week, it's like it's just a day to sleep. It's not a day to spend time with God, really. It's also a beautiful day for ministry, for sharing, and that's why we do some things. Like I know a lot of you guys, at least. The guys um, in the dorm, they were mentioning how they really enjoyed sunshine bands. It's always a blessing to get out and sing to people and see their smiles. And, and so we're trying to do things that are positive, a blessing to others. Another thing is, in the past, sometimes we've had more of a free time on Sabbath afternoon. And there's sometimes when that has definitely gone south. And so we try to, as was mentioned, idle hands can be the devil's workshop. So um, we've seen that. We have many examples of that happening so we do give time for that um, certain times, but we seek to give positive, positive things that can be done 
that are helpful and a blessing and some type of ministry because Sabbaths aren't just a day to go to church, go home, and just sleep the rest of the day. Yes, we should be spending time with the Lord. Yes, you know, it is, it is a rest in the sense of it's a change from our normal pace, but it doesn't mean we have to sleep all day. That's not the meaning. That's not what Sabbath was given for. We can bless others. We can, you know, spend some time in nature, things of that nature, but um, sleeping the whole day, day wouldn't be the best use of, of the Sabbath that God has given us. Daniel? Daniel? About the question? That's so why we have taken a little bit more about the free time, but guess what? You guys want free time? Then what you guys need to do is actually be responsible. A lot of times, for a lot of things, why we can't do a lot of things is because of people who weren't responsible. And they, you know, they made it to a point that we, that the staff, you know, had to put it that way. So if you guys want a difference, you guys should, you know, it's, it's, it's on you guys. Exactly. You will have, uh, you will find uh, occasionally, maybe once every three months or so uh, in your schedule, that's occasionally, uh, quiet time in the dorms. Quiet time in the dorms is in your own room uh, without other people, your suite mates, or anybody in your room, and you have time to rest or to read or to study. And those of you who have been here before, how easy is that to do? No, because it becomes a social time, and you want to be with other people, and then it's just so easy when you don't have a focus to totally forget it's Sabbath to get involved in conversation and behavior that's unbecoming on Sabbath. And so that's why, uh, Daniel was exactly right, that's why we don't do it very often, because it becomes such a hard thing for students to really, I mean, you say you want quiet time, but you don't. You really want kind of social time. And, uh, and, and we're, we're all about socializing. It's just that socializing on Sabbath without direction tends to not be very Sabbath-like. Can I switch my vocational training, please? Probably no. Uh, we do make some changes um, as need arise and as you prove yourself really faithful in what you are assigned to do. But um, there are certain things that generally don't change. Um, freshmen particularly have an entry level of learning in ag or in the food service. And it's almost unheard of for that to change. Uh, there are other things that may change. Um, Merlin has been assigned normally. Senior boys are in construction. He's been assigned in ag because we had some real needs in ag and it needed to be somebody who was 16 or older. And, um, and that was a temporary assignment. Uh, once we get uh, some, pardon? Get the grass. <laughs> yeah, once we get through the grass and the weed eating, um, Merlin's gonna go back to construction. So there'll be some changes like that along the way, probably some meal service occasionally, but not a whole lot of changes happen. Uh, will we camp in sweet groups? Probably. Oh, but look at all the rest of the day. How long do we have to sit in our sweet groups? I don't know. I'm being real, real honest, I don't know. Um, that's kind of related. Not that I'm trying to complain or anything, but why do juniors have to work six weeks in the summer?
Anybody want to do that, Mr. Neal? Uh, you have a you sure. Have a I, yes, I think okay. I do. Is this on? Yes. Um, so, uh, you know, when, like Mrs. Clark said, when we study the council that we have on education, um, and you read through the book Education, an inspiring book, if you all ever want to do that. If you're here at a school like this, I would encourage you. It's a wonderful book because it's not just about education, it's about life. You know what, you know what education, what life is? <laughs> It's an education. And when you graduate from Washington Hills, you are just beginning your education. So don't get over learning because it's life. And at any rate, and you study through that book, you realize that agriculture is, we are told, the ABCs of education. It's the foundation, it's the beginning of it. And, and there's a lot we can do during the school year, but we realize that during the summer, is when the vast majority of agriculture takes place in our country as far as growing produce and processing it. And so in order to fulfill that part of the council that we have, we looked at the program and basically you come up with the understanding that in order to really know, it's kind of like you study agriculture during the year, but it's the summer where most of it takes place. And so that's the study and, there, and you get some of it in the greenhouse and so forth. But the summer is when you really get involved in the agri agriculture component of it, as well as the processing and the marketing of it that we did this last summer. And so there's a component that is missing without that summer pro program. And it is our desire and hope as we read it and understand it, that our students would find not just, you know, oh, I've got to do it, but they would actually form a love for agriculture. It depends on the student, you know, at my home, because I read the Council on Education. So I get my kids involved in education and Myself, the spirit of prophecy says that we all should be in it. It should be something we cultivate. Why, when God created Adam and Eve, where did he put them? Why did he give them a garden? They were in a perfect environment without, a, without a sin. And we are told that without manual labor, God gave that to be a blessing because of sin. So when we work in the garden, it over, helps us to overcome our sin. That's really what we're after. We're after character development because do you know what our mission is? Can you all say our mission? Anyone? Someone said it? It's three things. It spells N-E-T. It's nurture, E, education, and T is training. So it's nurturing us into a relationship with Jesus. It's to educate us for a life of and training to. Okay, can you say it with me? It is to nurture us into a relationship with Jesus, educate us for a life of service and train to take us take the gospel to the that's our threefold mission and so in order to have that character with Jesus that light, that relationship with Jesus we are told that when we spend time in the soil we can learn lessons that help us to connect with Jesus the abiding the experience the vine I mean the, the Bible is full of this nature thing when we go camping it's an opportunity to see nature and to develop, develop a relationship with Jesus that's why we go camping we don't go camping to hang out. We do hang out, but, uh, but we go there so that we can, we can spend time and, and spend time more with Jesus and, and with one another and, and enjoy the things of nature. Anyway, so it's a vital component, really, of our education, and it's hard to fit it in the school year, and that's the main reason why we require it, because the spirit of prophecy really lays that out as what, we're, what we should be doing. And, and, you know, students that take it to heart, they almost always enjoy it. When they, when they actually, beforehand, they're like, oh, six weeks in the summer, it's hot, I gotta work in agriculture, I gotta sweat, and, and, uh, and, and it's almost laborious thinking about it. But almost anyone, when you ask them about that at the end of it, they've usually had a really good time and they've enjoyed it and they've learned and they've, they've really appreciated it. I went to a school that we had to work, not just juniors, freshmen, sophomores, and juniors all had to work half the summer, six weeks, every summer. And I worked on a dairy, because we had one at the time, for six weeks one summer. Got up at 4.30 in the morning, go out and milk the cows. And then I had to do it again in the afternoon. The next morning, same thing, all summer long for six weeks. And then I worked another summer in, in housekeeping, because the reason we had to do that is we had a sanitarium, and we, um, they called it a sanitarium, it was a, a nursing home, and we had to take care of the patients. So you had people all summer long that had to take, and we had a garden, all that stuff too, and I worked one summer on the garden. And so th we used to do it because it was part of the program, it's part of the vocational training. 
It's more than just academics that we're after about. If that was it, you go on home after class is over. But we're after educational training and vocation. It was a blessing to me. I learned skills there, work ethic. That was really a blessing to my life. And if you come with that spirit, you'll, you'll, it'll be a blessing in your own life. I agree. What? I remember my um, summer. Actually, because I was a staff kid, I got to work a few summers. Even better. But uh, honestly, some of my great memories... Staff children do have to work, what, five weeks? Yeah. Five, five weeks, weeks. Every, summer, every summer. Oh, yeah. So I know how They get is. free education, by the way. That's right. <laughs> free. Free. <laughs> but uh, I will say that some of the memories you make in the summer, the fun things... Now, last summer was a little different because of situations as COVID. known. But uh, normally, you know, we have an activity every evening, and there's a lot of fun things we do, and go to the lake and things of that nature. So there, it, it's not... But honestly, one thing you'll learn is life is full of work. And so enjoy work because you'll be doing it for life. So it's, it's a great experience. I getting out there in the garden, sweating, and, and just, I don't know. It was, it was a great experience. And I know you guys, if you put your mind to enjoy it, you will find so many things to enjoy about it. Amen. That you will, that's, that's the thing, guys. A lot of the reasons why we enjoy or dislike things are right here in your mind. I will tell you that again and again. It's in your mind. If, if there's something you're fussing about, you will think about Every other little thing that connects with that that makes it a bad situation. But if you think of the positive, you will see the positive in many things. So my encouragement is, if you're a junior going into it uh, next summer, enjoy it. It's going to be a blessing. Will be. Do we get paid for the six weeks we work? You do get scholarship credit for it. It's not pay. Yeah, you don't get cash in hand, but it goes on your bill. So you will, you'll earn a little over, I think, $1,000 for that time on your, credit, on your school bill. Why is dating illegal? <laughs> have we, we haven't had a topic on that yet, have we? We haven't had that in assembly? Um, we did with, on no, Tuesday. Is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Adner, Adner, Adner spoke had on it. it. I wasn't. Okay. Was, yeah, it was orientation. All right, one of you girls want to answer, or you want us to? <laughs> it's a big distraction. It might, not, it might not seem like it's a distraction, but it actually is because you're trying to think of ways. First of all, you know it's not allowed, so for you to do it would be you going out of your way. Just follow the rules. <laughs> and like, it's not allowed because it is a distraction, and your grades can drop. and. I'm pretty sure they put it in place because what are you dating for? You date people or you court people because you plan on marrying them. You're not gonna get married at 16 years old. So, on, and if you do, you're gonna date for like six years, seven years until then. And like not in a bad way, but I doubt that you're going to, unless like that's really the person for you, you're probably not gonna date your little uh, high school boyfriend for seven years to get married. It's probably not going to happen. So you have to think of it like logically. Are you actually going to marry this person that you met in 10th grade that you liked a lot? Like, are you actually going to? So you have to consider that as a fact and then it'll just be a distraction and then your grades will drop because you wanted to date someone that you might not even spend the rest of your life with. So you have to think of that aspect too. Also, this is the time of forming character. And when someone is all distracted with somebody across campus, it does not help with that. It is a distraction, as, as mentioned. It's going against, you know, the rules we have here. And the rules are for your good. I will tell you that in this time, there is a lot going on in your minds, meaning there's a lot of brain changing going on in your minds. You don't even know it. But your brain is changing. There's a lot of growing. And this is just a rough time to try to get into any of that. Another thing is you need to be focusing on whatever the mission, whatever mission the Lord has for your life, because he will make everything else clear as long as you are, first of all, connect with him, and on your mission later on in life, he will make those things um, work out in a beautiful way. But this is definitely not a time because, as mentioned, it's a distraction. It's not good for your spiritual life, because whenever you're thinking about that in this time when you know it's against the rules and you're trying to get into that, it's going to definitely negatively impact your spiritual life, which will impact your growth in the Lord and becoming the individual that God wants you to be, to be ready for that later on. So in every way, it's not the time or place um, for that. I just want to say, too, that 
you know, we are, we have one goal, one desire, one purpose here, really. The reason why Washington Hills exists, there's lots of schools, there's lots of places you could go that many, if not most of them, would allow that. True? True. Yeah. Why do we exist? We exist for one purpose, because we want to follow God's will. That's it, period. And we try to do that. And we've read the counsel that we have on education. And it has very strong counsel that this is not the time, this is the place. So those are good reasons. But the real reason is that we have counsel that says no. Period. And if you want to go, if, if you just don't want to follow the counsel, there's lots of places you could go, isn't there? And we like you here. We want you here. <laughs> but it's a choice, really. And we hope and we, we trust that each of you are here because you want God's will for your life. And if you get involved in that here, number one, because it is against the rules, you can know for certain that doing it is, uh, the, is a problem because you, then you're, you're, you're under, you're, you cannot be following God when you are being deceptive. Is that true? It's impossible. And the only way you can have a relationship here is a deceptive relationship. Undercover, underground, anything else, right? So there's no way that God can bless you, period. And yet you came here because you want to grow. And so if you get involved in relationships like that, and most people, if they're in relationships, you ask them, oh, are, are you in it? They almost always, no, they're not. They're just friends, right? Just friends is always what it is. Although it's, it's, it's so easy for, and our, as Nathan was saying, our changes and our hormones, everything else that is going on to, to have those thoughts and, and to lead on to something else. Now, it is, it is just paramount, though, that if you want a, a successful year of students, there's a four, five-letter word. It begins with D and ends in A and has ROM in the middle of it. <laughs> what is it? Drama. You ever heard that word before? You ever heard it at, so, at, at Washington Hills before? <laughs> Never. What does drama almost always go around? It's not guys and guys or girls and girls or girls and guys. It's, it's relationships, right? It can't be guys and guys or girls and girls or it can be girls and guys, but it's almost always issues with getting along with each other. Is that right? It's not issues, I have drama with my computer. <laughs> it's like, it, I mean, we don't have issues with things. We have issues with people, right? And so the, uh, the thing about drama, the thing about relationships is, boy, it just kicks drama on steroids. Who likes so-and-so and who likes so-and-so and who's mad at so-and-so? And, oh, and then who's people... Who's jealous of so-and-so Who's jealous? Likes her and and, and people encouraging, did you know that so-and-so likes so-and-so? And you pass it on so that you start something going. And it puts in their mind, well, they like me. I didn't know that. And, and that's drama. <laughs> and it's, it's totally destructive. We are told the spirit of prophecy says that that destroys the work of the Holy Spirit on our campus. And not a thread of it are staff to allow. She that's is strong term. counsel. In fact, she blames us. She blames us. If we allow it, he's going to hold us accountable. We have strong counsel. And so we, we want to kindly try to encourage you that if you really want a year that's going to be successful in your, in your life spiritually, you need to put it behind you. Really decide. Do I want what I want or do I want what God wants for my life this year? And if you put it aside, it'll be a year like none other in your life and then this school. But the years that I can remember that are just like, I felt like the Holy Spirit was really working on people's lives is when there was a sense, very little of drama was kind of, it, there, it seemed like everybody was trying to cooperate in that area. It wasn't, it wasn't, there wasn't this undercover and, and, and behind staff and, oh, here comes the staff. It was a cooperation seeking after God. And that's what we, that's what you will find is an incredible joy and blessing in your life. Dale. a lady to a young man. The one thing I remember about that letter 
is how this young woman's self-esteem was very low. Why, I don't know. But it probably something to do with that relationship. <clears throat> Wanting to please, I guess, you know. Your self-esteem <clears throat> is very critical in your future relationships. As a minister, I have met many women who have pushed away young men who would treat them well because they didn't feel worthy because their self-esteem was so bad. Where do you get self-esteem? Look, look to the cross. That's the price paid for your redemption. Amen. That's your value. Amen. Don't let your value be, be, by, be placed by someone else. That's the way the world does things. There are lots of women out there suffering from low self-esteem, they have bad relationships as a result. So take time to build your self-esteem with God. Amen. Then maybe later on you can think about relationships. We're going to do two um, real quickly, and then we need to draw to an end. We'll say these that have come in that we can't cover today for another Q&A. Why is it that dorm nights don't very often? Yeah, they left out. Um, Sometimes our schedule is just really full with a lot of other things that we want to be doing as well. And particularly since dorm nights have to be with the deans and the deans have other activities that we need them on. But October, we have a dorm night coming up, so you'll be happy for that. This is the one um, I want us to, to focus on just for a moment. Any advice for students who have crushes? I think that's a good question. Caitlin. Don't worry about it, honestly. Like, because if that's your number one thing that you think about every single day while you're sleeping, everything, while you're doing your devotions, it's going to really mess up your spiritual walk and it's going to consume your life. Like, if that person's the number one thing you think about, you really need to pray because <laughs> Jesus should be what you think about always. And that person will leave one day, most likely. It will, you, that girl or guy will leave and you will maybe never see them again. But Jesus will always be there for you. So you should just pray and ask the Lord to take that feeling if it's not, it's not meant to be right now. So just take that feeling from you so that you can spend more time with him. Don't. What should you do? What should you not do? <laughs> Don't. Do tell someone. And I would encourage you, and this is so hard because you feel like if you were to admit something like that to a staff, they might think, oh no, they're always going to be watching me. They're going to be da da da. You know, but in fact, the actual, usually the act, exact opposite happens. Because if you don't sell something and it does happen and it becomes noticeable, then you kind of fall into that category of, oh no, we've got an issue here. But usually when a, when a student comes to their dean, it would be a good person, I would encourage you, and say, you know, I'm really struggling with something, can I help you? And you tell them, they're not going to go, oh, oh no, I've got, you know, they're going to they're gonna say, you know, sometimes, in, in, sometimes it's almost like, whew, praise the Lord, that's natural. <laughs> it is natural, isn't it? Should be. Attraction of the opposite sex should be natural. What you do with it is a big issue. But the fact that you have it is not an issue. <laughs> We recognize that's natural at this age, right? So we're not going to be alarmed that that happens. In fact, we might be thankful that happens <laughs> to some degree. Um, but if you talk to your dean, they can really help you work through that and counsel you and give you encouragement. And then when you have done that, do you know what? You are more accountable because you know somebody else knows that can help you. When we go to God and we, help, we ask him, we're accountable to him. And when we come to a staff and we ask them, somebody you can trust, and you say, you know, I need help in this area. I'm struggling in this area. I need help. And they'll pray with you and they'll help you and they'll encourage you. And, and then the fact that you've told somebody of responsibility helps you to be accountable to your own thoughts, your own choices. Because by doing that, so, you're saying, I know what is right. I have a heart that wants to do what is wrong. That's all of us, by the way. That's me. That's you. We have a heart, that, and then when God comes in, he changes that heart, and we learn to do right. 
He does change it, but all of us naturally of ourselves has a heart that wants to do one thing, a head that wants to do something else usually because we want to follow God and we read what his counsel is. But if we, if we take him at his word and we encourage others, that's, that's helping us to be accountable to somebody. And then it helps us to guide our heart. The Bible says we have to do that. We can't follow it. We have to guide this thing. If we follow this thing, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof, and to a woman, is the end thereof is the way of what? Death. The death. But we have to guide this thing with his word and with our reasons. And we have to guide what's inside here. Otherwise, it will guide us into paths that will be regret in our life. You will find that you'll have a constant battle with your thoughts, but you can gain the victory on them. Um, there, there's a little saying that says, don't fuel the flame. You want to smother it instead. So what do you do? You refuse to allow your mind to think about that person. I mean, the devil will put it in, but you can put it back out with God's help. And you don't daydream. You know, it's easy to daydream yourself into this glorious relationship with that person. Maybe you're even envisioning your wedding day. Uh -huh, I know. Uh, maybe not you all, but you all. <laughs> and, and, and what does that do? It just fuels the crush. So if you don't want that crush to grow, you do learn to avoid some things, and you do learn to control your thoughts. So you don't daydreaming, daydream, which daydreaming is destructive anyway, even if it's for other things. But you don't daydream. You don't spend time you know, figuring out how you can sit with that person or meet them in the hall or talk to them. You don't notice things about them. Oh, I like that dress you're wearing. Or, uh, you know, you, you stay away from those personal types of things that further develop interest. You don't send them a note of encouragement when they are depressed or discouraged. You would let somebody of their sex do that, okay? So, so there's some things that you do that fuel your crush. What do you do with it? Well, you, you learn to smother those things. You stop feeding the interest. And what was said already about liking somebody, you don't ever tell a person, not your best friend. You don't tell that one that you think can keep the best secret. You just don't. Why do you not do that? They might spread it, but there's a different reason. And then they'll spread They'll likely fuel it because it'll get in their mind and they'll, oh, they, we, we love to encourage it. It makes it bigger in your own mind, too. When you share it, it with that's somebody. the thing. When you say it with your mouth, we are constituted by God that what our mouth says, our heart believes. Yeah. It changes our thoughts, our mouth. And when you tell somebody, oh, I, I, I really like so and so suddenly you like them all the more because you just said it. Mm -hmm. It does. It's a fact of who God made us and how he created us. And remember this, the Bible says that, uh, we'll just leave you with this, that um, out of the what are the issues of life? And what does it say at the beginning of that text? It says out of the, your heart are the issues of life. Do what with all diligence? Keep your heart with all diligence. Do you know what it means to keep something? The word is what they would do when the soldiers sat down and they kept watch. What were they doing? They were guarding it. And when we guard, it's really to keep, is to guard our heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. At these ages, right now, your heart, what you choose to do with it, are going to make the issues of your life for the rest of it. You're going to make choices, and some of you, by God's grace, will get victory over that. And you'll find that that makes incredible life issues that are going to be incredible in your life when God brings it in the right person. But others, the devil's going to tempt, and I hope it doesn't happen, pray it doesn't, that you might not guard your heart. And you'll get issues in your life that you'll live with the rest of your life. It's the decisions that you're making right now, guarding your heart, that will make it someday the issues of life are going to be incredible, a blessing, because you're going to follow God's plan for your life. Just one thing I want to mention as well is, 
you know, we talk about suppressing those thoughts and not thinking those thoughts for sure, but one thing you need to do is replace them with Jesus. Because you see, Jesus, he's the lover of all. He's the one that can truly fulfill the heart. No person can fulfill our hearts. It's only the Lord. Only two, later on, only two fully fulfilled people in Jesus can have a, a, a good relationship. Amen. So at this point, you need to be filling yourself with Jesus. What, I mean, what do I mean by that? When, when you think of that one person, whoever it may be, say, Jesus, I want to think of you. Because if, if Jesus is not number one in your life, a relationship's not going to work. A relationship will never work. Jesus always still has to be number one. Above, even in marriage, Jesus needs to be number one in your life. And that is the only way things really work out. So when, when you have those thoughts, say, Jesus, help me. I want to love you more. He, he will do that. He will show you ways. Spend time with him. Pray to him. Talk to God. Literally tell him about these things. Say, Lord, I'm struggling with this. Help me. He will help you. But remember, replace those thoughts of others with Jesus. He's beautiful. We're told that um, matchmaking, I believe I'm quoting this correctly, is sin. Um, be careful that you don't try encouraging your friends in a relationship. It's detrimental to them and it's detrimental to you. If you know they're in a relationship or they're wanting to be or they're just attracted, just be quiet. Don't, don't mention it. You don't want to be caught in that. Would you pray for us, please? Please bow your heads. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we come to you in prayer, thanking you, Lord, for the time we had to go over a few questions and, by God's grace, some good answers. I pray, Lord, that you would bless each one of us here, Lord. We pray that you would be number one on the throne because we know that as you are, as you are central, as you are the focus of our lives, um, you can guide us in all these different areas, Lord. And we pray for the day. Thank you for the things we'll get to accomplish and do and learn. And I want to pray that you would bless each student, each staff. And bless those that may be watching online, too. I pray that today would be a kingdom-building day, that we would be closer to Jesus at the end of the day, um, and may our thoughts be on you. Bless each one here in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for watching our assembly here at Washita Hills. We hope you received precious information. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also, tap the notification bell before you go so you know when we upload the next program. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. The links are in the description below. Have a great day. In the meantime, stay safe.